it's Liz Yule from Old Stables Crafts again and welcome back to Why Not Wednesday and as you know we're doing a bit of a why not embrace Christmas on a Wednesday at the moment. So this is today's project. This uses the Star of Light stamp set and matching thinlets um, that were part of last year's autumn winter catalogue and have carried over to this year's annual catalogue. Um, so I thought I would give them a bit of a revival. Um, as I say, these are all already available to buy in the annual catalogue. Um, so remember that there are uh, sections in your catalogue. Obviously, you won't necessarily have them uh, tabbed off like I have, but one of them is a holiday section, which oh, is just there. Um, and this, so it starts with the new Be Merry uh, suite. And, then, and this is on page 112 over here. Uh, and then goes through and we've got a number of um, carried over and then some new uh, stamp sets. So we've got these this lovely reindeer uh, set, Nature Sings, which is gorgeous and would work really well. You probably can't see that actually. Would work really well with Lovely as a Tree, that um, real old favourite. Um, the Cookie Cutter Christmas I used recently. Uh, Flurry of Wishes and Peace, the, uh, Peace This Christmas are carried over. Hollyberry Happiness I've re used recently. Santa's Sleigh, uh, again, carry over. Christmas Pines carry over. Hang Your Stocking. And here we are with the Star of Light. Um, so it, as I say, coordinates with the Thinlet dies. Um, we are only doing a little bit of stamping. Um, this one I have used crumb cake for the stamping and then gold for this um, star and for the thread behind. And then the falling softly, I want to say it's the softly falling textured impression embossing folder. Um, so because I'm going to change this up a bit, why wouldn't I? Uh, this time we are using copper because I love a bit of copper. Uh, and we're going to match that with the soft suede and very vanilla. So I have cheated a little bit in that I have run my um, die through the Big Shot already. The reason for that, I have to say, is because it is quite a tricky one to um, get out cleanly. This is one of the few dies that I would actually say the precision base plate is a must for. Um, a lot of the ones that uh, it's recommended for, you can actually get away with running it through the big shot four or five times or putting a shim in and just using the standard base plate. Uh, but for these, um, and there's a smaller version as well, I highly recommend the precision base plate. Uh, it does also take uh, quite a while, and another reason why I did this in advance, to take out the bits. Um, and then for me, I found that the number of times I try, have tried this, both last year and this, uh, to release it, and then I've ended up tearing one of these um, edges off. The key is to actually release it from the inside out. If you release it from the outside in, it seems to tear more easily. So I have released it from the inside out, um, other than these just last couple. So just very gently with your um, piercing tool, just kind of get in there and you can hear it go. Um, you probably can't, but I can, I can hear it go and you kind of get a, a sense that it's beginning to disconnect. And then I just run my piercing tool between the die and the foil, and then it releases off. So there we are, one copper snowflake. Pop that back on its mat. Um, because I've used this quite a lot, it has actually started to bend. Um, so you do need to just be aware of that. Do do be careful that you don't break it. It's a bit like, like the Eastern Palace. You need to treat it with a certain degree of respect. So as far as uh, things that we are using, Standard A6 card base, so that's A4 cut in half, scored down the middle, folded into an A6 standard base. This is my standard um, first layer, 
So five and five eighths by three and seven eighths, or fourteen and a quarter by nine and three quarters. And then the foil was. Let me check my notes. Was two and a half by three and a quarter, which is seven by eight and a half centimeters. So uh, I'm only using two stamps, which is the lovely swirl and the greeting. So I'm going to start with the swirl and my soft suede ink. So I'm just going to ink that up. And then I'm going to have it coming from this corner in a diagonal. So have you started planning your Christmas cards yet? That's the question because Christmas is going to be upon us terribly quickly. Um, I do a lot of uh, craft stalls, so I go to f uh, like um, local fairs and stuff. Actually, I don't need to take that off. Um, so I do have to think ahead. Um, but um, even so, it does just creep up. So I'm taking, may your season be peaceful, your new year be bright. And I'm just going to, it fits quite nicely in this swirl. Um, let's see if I can get it straight. Let's start with the card actually being straight. That might be a plan. Um, so yes, I, I think it's never too early to start planning for Christmas, which is really quite depressing as we are still just about in August. Um, even when you're seeing this, it is still going to be August. Right, so I've done the stamping. At this stage, I'm going to emboss. Now, the embossing folder, um, obviously you can emboss or deboss. I've embossed, and I'm going to emboss again. So you want the lumps uh, to be behind your cardstock so that they push into it. Uh, and I want it so that it's hard, there's more um, embossing at the top than at the bottom, and this is a falling. Um, so I'm going to have it lined up across the bottom, then closed, and then just run it through um, your normal sandwich uh, on your Big Shot, which I shall do. Oh, I say your normal sandwich. Actually, it's not your normal sandwich. Let's get that right. So let's bring in the multi-purpose platform. So this is the standard Big Shot platform, and you will see here that for embossing, you just use this and two cutting plates. This is what you will add on if you want to put thinlets or framelets through. The magnetic platform is the equivalent of the Big Shot platform plus the thin die adapter. So do not do what I just tried to do and put it through with an embossing folder on your magnetic platform. So let's try that again. So much easier. Just run it straight through and you have the fold of your embossing folder going through first and then out we come with our lovely embossing. So um, the next thing to do is bring in some copper thread. I love the thread. It is, I'm going to use quite a bit, um, it's a great way of just adding a little bit of something something to a card um, and it's really really not expensive because um, you get masses this is the first roll I've had and I've still got masses on here I mean I could just about I probably will order another one before Christmas starts in earnest um, I'll have to get a new one of each of them probably um, but it's they've all lasted me a long time so let me just check embellish it I think it's under embellishments. Um, boom, boom, it is metallic thread. Here we are on page 198. Um, £2.75 for over 45 metres. So I have just pulled off. Let's see, how long is this? I have pulled off. Uh, about a metre in my unscientific, hold it up to my nose and see what happens. Um, but it's about a metre. So, what was it, 2.75? Um, once upon a time I had a calculator. Um, I will work out how much it is a metre. 
this time. Oh, here we go. So, 275 divided by 45, and there's more than 45, it's 6p a metre, which for an embellishment is nothing. So I'm just going to wrap this round my fingers, three fingers and four fingers, just so that it's different lengths. Then I'm going to have my star sort of here-ish. So I'm just going to put a little bit of fast fuse because it's going to be hidden behind the star. Take my, oh, I've done it too tightly around my fingers. I can't get them off. Take my loop off, catch one end, try and find the other end. There we go. And catch that before I do anything else. And then these bits, I'm just going to kind of make sure I get attached somewhere on that fast fuse including this one that seems to be wanting to go into a real twizzle. So I'll just twizzle it a bit and spread these out a bit. And it really doesn't matter how messy it looks at this stage because we're going to cover it up with our star anyway. So this will go over the top and it will just look like sort of sparkly sparkle. Um, I'm going to use, and I have done a little bit of prep, um, I'm going to use some of our mini dimensionals. Um, they're still going to be quite a challenge to get them on here. I have cut some very, very thin uh, strips off the edge, which are so thin they don't want to come to piece, come apart. Come along. <sighs> okay, two very, very thin pieces, which I might possibly be able to stick. Uh, these are just going to go down the middle of these. Actually, I'll do it this way because then I can see better. Uh, down the middle of our long um, spiky bits. Spiky bit being a technical phrase. Uh, and then I've got half dimensionals that I can pop kind of in the middle a bit. Um, and there is a kind of little corner that you can tuck them into. Um, which is quite useful. She says, having lost it mentally, lost it again. Well, there we are. I can see it again. So here, there is a little corner where if you don't drop your dimensional, you can stick it just there. Uh, so let's do a few of those. Got to visualize it again. There we are. Uh, uh, there we are. And one more. And this is really just to give it a bit of support. It doesn't need a huge amount of support um, because it's only got to attach itself to a card. Uh, it's not as if someone's going to be pulling at it, you'd like to think. Um, so, Ooh. oh, that's already had its bit taken off. That's why I can't get it off. Have I got all of them? Yes, 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 yes. So let's just pop that here. And then my favourite adhesive. Quick flip to the nib. And onto our card base, with our little bit of wiggle room. I particularly like using multi-purpose adhesive with embossing because you know that you're not going to squash your embossing flat again, uh, and also that it is going to actually have something that it's attaching to. So there we are. Um, oops, let's get rid of the piece of embossing dimensional backing. So a gold with crumb cake and a copper with, um, oh, it's got an end. Can't have that. Let's get rid of our end. Let's cut that from in there. There we are. That's better. Um, so yes, copper on, on soft suede, gold on crumb cake. And of course you could put silver on maybe, um, smoky slate. That would look, that would look quite pretty. Um, 
I hope you enjoyed that. I hope it gives you a bit of inspiration for your Christmas designs. Let's put, let's put these a little more squarely in the camera. Um, if you would like to see more, please hit subscribe down there. Um, I really do love having new subscribers. Um, so that would be great. If you've enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. If you need any of the supplies, I would be very grateful if you would shop with me on my online store. There are links to the products in the description below. There is also a link to my blog post, which has the dimensions and some other photo some close up photographs. Um, there's also details of my hostess code, um, VIP club um, and all that good stuff. So I hope you enjoyed that and I look forward to seeing you again very soon. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye.